it's quite clear that there's a strategic focus and an opportunity that has been grasped by Indian cities and the Indian state and, and federal government in relation to improving the quality of life and public service delivery through technology. Hence the focus on smart cities and smart communities. Um, the conference itself is focusing on the needs for capacity development and changing skill sets within particularly the smart city administrations, but also different types of partnerships. What is quite clear is that there's a lot of technical skills and managerial skills in India, but that it maybe needs to be reinvigorated a bit in terms of not only looking at classical skill sets, such as lawyers or technicians, HR, procurement, but really merging those and having more collaborative cross skills. So the need to look at process change, process re-engineering that is enabled by technology. So using technology to drive us instead of letting us be driven by it. So we're looking at a need to also ensure that civil servants and decision makers not only use the technology to, to improve service delivery and productivity, but also start thinking about innovation creative thinking, entrepreneurship, and breaking down different government silos to really make the most uh, out of the technology opportunities that we have. What could be a, be a great approach in India um, is different types of networks. So different clusters of cities, of towns, of villages, uh, of states working together and sharing their experiences. You see this emerging already and, and the World Bank and the federal governments, and governments initiatives on this have sort of planted the seeds. But now the fields need to be tended and, and, and the crops need to be harvested and we need to re-sow and, and, and continue that cycle to use the agricultural uh, analog. But, but really the the joint collaboration, both in terms of sharing experiences of what works and what doesn't work, but also joint development, joint procurement. So you don't reinvent the, the wheel, sort of speak, uh, in every single city, but you, you learn together, you learn with each other, you develop together. It is not easy. It requires that you change the way you, you operate. Um, but good experiences means that it comes more natural. But again, it's a new way of thinking. It's a smart way of thinking, if you, if you like, about how we really optimize the, the resources we have available, make it do more with less or with the same thing, and, and really utilize the technology to, to its most. And it's not just about the technology. It's about regulatory change, administrative burden reduction, uh, organizational change, process re-engineering. So sometimes the best idea is not even related to technology, but technology actually takes it to a whole new level that allows us to optimize something in the back office and reallocate those human resources to something more valuable, not only for better job quality, but also for better service delivery. So governance, linking our vision with strategic initiatives, with activities, and with proper key performance indicators that both measure are we on time, are we on budget, are we achieving our, our, our productivity performance goals, but also look at quantifying uh, customer satisfaction, citizen satis satisfaction through, through happiness meters or, or smileys or, or star grading systems in order to see across service areas and over time that we are actually achieving our objectives. So it's very important that the vision is linked down to operational indicators that we can monitor on so we, sh we are sure that we are moving forward and we're moving in the direction and in the pace that we want. I hope that the importance of, of governance networks and, and models, collaboration is, is a key one and also the need for continuous learning within organizations. So it's really about being agile and having a continuous learning and improvement cycle in place. Whether or not you do that through a, a PRINCE2 project management model or a change management model doesn't really matter. It's the fact that you're using an approach that gets you around all the different stakeholders, all the different potential risks. Look at both the, you know, the rupee questions about doing things faster, cheaper and better in a, in a, in a financial sense, but also in terms of the improved in terms of quality of life, cleaner air, better use of water, more water accessible for, for communities that are not yet connected, et cetera. So it's really getting around the whole, whole aspect. That's what is embedded in the smart approach. Uh, but unfortunately, 
there's too many organizations around the world that still just puts a smart label on things that are more classical, still very productive and value creating in IT initiatives, but it's more classical within the existing operational systems. So it doesn't really utilize the technology to its fullest.